Hi, and welcome to this video for the LMN Time app. Here we're going to train the basics of the LMN Time app, just clocking in, clocking out, switching jobs, the simple stuff. In another video, we'll get into a little more detailed stuff like marking people late, absent, etc. So let's start by installing the app and logging in. Step one is that you're going to install the app on your phone. After it's installed, you should see an icon looks something like the one in the top right hand corner of my screen here. Those of you on Apple may see a slightly different look, but essentially it's that smartphone with the circle in it. After that, you're going to get to the sign in screen. Here's where you're going to need your username and your password. If you don't have a username and password yet, you're going to need to contact your office. They can set you up with one. Once you've got that, you just touch the sign in button. Now that I've signed in, right now I'm looking at a blank screen. So if you've never filled out a timesheet before, you're going to see something like this. Those of you who have filled out timesheets before, I'll see a list of all the previous timesheets on this screen. Now those who are new, the first thing you might want to do is set up your crew. To set up your crew, I'm going to go down to the bottom and see where it says crew and it's got the two person's heads. I'm going to press that. That's going to load a list of employees from my company. And here's where I want to select the people that are with me most often. Day to day, you can change this, of course. But here's where I'm going to want to pick the two, three, four, however many people are usually with you when you head out to do your work for the day. Let's assume this crew is already accurate. Assuming I want to make a small change to this crew, I'm just going to tap the employee that I don't want on my crew and then tap the employee that I do want so that any employees that I select should show up in green. Now that I've got three green employees, those are the three employees that are going to come with me on a day-to-day -day basis going forward. You can always come back and change this later. To get back to your timesheets, you're gonna click the timesheets button. And now we're gonna create our first timesheet. First thing you wanna do is read the screen. It says click the add button in the top right-hand side of the screen to create a new timesheet. So we're gonna do that. We'll click that plus button and it'll ask us to confirm the date of the timesheet that you wanna create. If you need to change the date, you can click that calendar and pick a new date, but I'm going to assume that's the timesheet I want to create now. So I'm going to click OK. Now on this new timesheet, it says click the menu button at the top right hand side of the screen to clock in. So I'm going to do that again. There's three lines in the top right hand corner. That's what I want to press to bring out the timesheet menu. And here I've got some options. We're going to clock in. And the way to get paid in LMN time is to make sure that you clock into a job. So the very first thing I want to do is hit job clock in. Next, you want to pick the job that you're clocking into. Now, if you're starting at the shop, you might be clocking into a job called shop. I've got one set up here and it looks something like that. Shop construction division. Now also, you may clock in directly to a job. Depends on the way your company estimates. So you might be looking for a job here. But the important thing to remember is you can't start getting paid unless you clock into something. So make sure that you've got something to clock into. This is how I start to get paid. Every one of your payroll hours has to get accounted for somewhere, either to a job like shop or to a customer's job. So we'll leave this. Now let's assume I'm Sam Back and I'm the foreman. My two other crew start with me in the day, but they don't start as early as I do. That's okay. Just turn those, those other employees off and just clock in yourself. I'm going to pick my tasks as loading, unloading, and driving and hit next. And just to make it realistic, I'm going to back my time up. Say I'm starting at 6.53 a.m. So what's happening now is I've created a timesheet. I've clocked myself in at 6.53. And so far, none of my other employees are with me. So this might be time as a foreman where you're loading the truck, getting everything ready, and your helpers haven't arrived yet. Now it's time to clock in my helpers. So I'm going to do that using the exact same steps. Top right-hand corner, hit the menu button. Then hit job clock in. Pick the job. And again, we'll clock into the shop. Click next. Pick staff that are with you today. So for example, if I'm going out with Jana and Sean, I'm going to click those two on and you'll see at the top, everybody who's selected in dark green are those who are being clocked in. Hit next. What are you working on? Loading, unloading and driving, yard equipment maintenance, whatever the tasks are set up for that job, you pick what you're clocking into. Hit next and then make sure the time is correct. I'm going to back mine up just again to be realistic. 
So now you can see what's happened here is Sam was on the clock from 6.53 to 7.06 by himself. The rest of the crew joined him at 7.06. Now let's clock into our first customer job. So we're going to load our trucks. We're going to drive off to get to the customer job. And when I'm there, I need to clock into that site. Very same steps again. You don't have to clock out of shop. Just clock into the next job you're working on. Top right hand corner. Click the menu button. Click job clock in. Now there's a few ways to pick your job. You can use the job drop down, find your job and select it. But if you have a long list of jobs, you might find it easier to sort by group. So if your company has organized their jobs by groups, you could pick a group. And then when you drop down the jobs menu, you'll only see the jobs that are in that group. You could also search for a job. Click the middle button and then type what you want to search for. Any jobs with those letters will pop up to the top and just touch the green box there to clock into that job. Finally, you could clock in by schedule. So if your company's using the scheduling app, you can go scheduled, pick the crew that you're leading today, and all the jobs that are assigned to you on the schedule will show up in the order you're supposed to hit them. So three ways to clock in. I'm gonna clock into this Anderson CBI job and go next. Now again, it's bringing me all my employees. Remember, I've clocked everybody in now, so it's assuming we're all going to this job. But double check it, make sure it's accurate, and then click Next. Now you need to pick the task that your crew is working on. So if we're there doing mowing, or cleanups, or pruning, or enhancements, I'm going to pick the proper option. In this case, we'll say we're mowing. Now if I need to select one employee is doing something different, or more employees is doing something different, that's easy too. Just click the drop down beside that employee and pick what they're doing. And now you can see I can have two employees working on one task and one working on another. Click next to move on. It's going to ask you for the date and time. Now it's always going to default to the phone's date and time. If you need to change this because you forgot to clock in or you want to make a manual change, you have to go down to the bottom here and click the edit button. Once I click the edit button, it's going to allow me to backdate the time. So if I want to set this back to say 8 a.m., I'll do that just like that. Now, just a note of caution. If you do this, the office can see that you manually change the time. The office needs to know that you're clocking in properly. So they will have on record that it actually was 1.54 and I've changed it to 8 o'clock. But that's okay if the change was necessary. There's got to be some way you can fix your timesheets properly. So now I'm clocking in at 8.01, but remember again, the office is going to know that I manually changed that time and they'll know where you were when you changed that time. Click finish when you're ready to clock in. And what it's done now is clocked all the employees out of the shop and the time accordingly and into the Anderson job. And now we're working on the Anderson job. If you want to see information about the Anderson job, you can click the magnifying glass and it's going to show you the name, the task, estimated versus actual hours to date, how many man hours were estimated for that visit, and also give you a place to enter task notes, weather notes, and other things, depending on what your company set up for you. When you go to your next job, you're just going to do the exact same thing. Menu button. Job clock in. Pick the next job you're going to. Hit next. Confirm all the employees are coming with you. Hit next. Pick the task that you're working on. Hit next. Confirm that the date and time is right. Hit finish. Now, if you're clocking out of a job, it's probably going to ask you on the last step here to enter notes or mark down activities that were completed. So here I can put in that we're finished and that everything was OK. And click the OK box. If your company's using the scheduling app, you may also get this note here. This is for billing and this is for completeness tracking. The office needs to know when the cut got finished. So if you were clocked into a job that's on the schedule for a maintenance, it's going to ask you, did this job get completed? If you completed the job, you're going to tick that off. And that lets them know that it was finished. If you started the job but had to stop for weather related reasons or any other reason, then it's not completed and you want to leave it white. You'd say it's not complete. If you finished it, you're going to tick it and then that lets the office know that it's completed. You're also going to have to confirm the changes just to make sure that you're verifying it got done and click OK. 
And what's happened now is I've clocked out of the last job we were working on and into this new job that we're working on. And that's it. We're just going to do that day in and day out. Top right hand side, you're going to click the menu. You're going to clock into the job. You're going to work that job until you're finished, get to the next job, and then just do the same thing. You don't need to clock out of jobs. You just need to keep clocking in. It'll automatically clock you out of the last task and into the new task that you want to work on. So now let's take a look at what happens at the end of the day. Let's say you're done your day and you want to wrap up. Same thing, top right hand corner, we're going to use the menu button, but this time instead of job clock in, you're going to go clock out. When the clock out screen comes up, it's just going to confirm the date and time that you want to end your clock in time. Same thing as when we clocked in. If I only want to clock out some of my laborers, but not myself, I'll just untick myself and then it says not clocking out. So that way it won't end my time, but it will end theirs. If you're clocking out everybody, they should all be ticked. When you're ready to move on, click OK. Now, because I just finished that job, it's going to ask me for some notes. So I'm going to enter those notes, click the OK button. And because that job was also on the schedule, it's just going to ask me if I finished it. This is just the last job that I left for the day. So we're going to say, yes, we finished and it's confirmed. Hit the OK button and it's going to give us this last review of our timesheet. So notice I don't have any jobs now in green. Everything's gone white and everything has an end time and a start time. Now I just have one more step to do and that's submit the timesheet to the office. That's their way of, of knowing that I've verified that this timesheet is complete and accurate. So your last step now at the end of the day is to go up to the top right hand book corner and click submit timesheet. When you click submit timesheet, it's going to ask you just before you submit, did you take a lunch? So it's going to say this is the lunch deduction. The lunch deduction time is 1230 and the duration is 30 minutes. If that's accurate, great. If it's not, you can change that. Or if you didn't take lunch, you just untick each employee and it sets them to no lunch. It's important that you set your lunch time and your duration accurately because it's going to subtract those minutes at that time from whatever job you were working on. That way that job doesn't look bad on estimated versus actual hours. When that's complete, you hit OK and it'll give you a summary of each employee, their start time and their end time and their total hours for that day. Double check that, make sure it's accurate. When you're satisfied you've remembered everybody and that you've got the right start and end time, click OK and it says it's ready for submission. And if you're sure you're ready to submit, click yes. When you click yes, that timesheet will then go to the office and it now has a status of submitted. You can see that right underneath the date. When a timesheet is submitted, and I'm gonna open it up again now, you'll notice that I can't make changes to these things. The times are locked down, the notes are, are not editable anymore, the task isn't changeable. That's because this timesheet's been submitted and the office is gonna review it. Once it's been approved, it'll show up on my timesheet as approved and it'll turn a different icon. And that's all you need to do each day. Clock in, clock into your jobs throughout the day, clock out at the end of the day, and submit your timesheet. And if you do that every day, your timesheets will be in perfect order. Now in the next video, we're going to go through a couple more advanced features, like adding somebody as absent, finding a job on the map, tracking employees as late, and a few other handy tools that will help you use this even better.